All right, today we're gonna to be talking about long-tailed weasels, Mustela frenata, specifically in North Carolina. So long-tailed weasels are similar to both least weasels and short-tailed weasels. Their most distinguishing factors are tan and brown feet and a long tail as given away by their name. They are also a little bit bigger than both least weasels and short-tailed weasels, which are also in the Mustelidae family. They live up to eight years and reproduce every year with four to eight offspring. Now weasels eat small mice, voles, and rabbits, um, and other small prey. They are very ferocious <laughs> little predators, um, and they have extremely high metabolism, so they are constantly hunting. They must eat five to six times a day. Um, now that being said, they are also, they, because they are so small, they are also eaten by many other predators, such as coyotes, foxes, and um, other like big bird species. Um, actually, a lot of the records that we have of weasels, especially in North Carolina, are from big bird species. Like their feces and droppings contain weasel skulls and bones and things like that. But it's also worthy to consider too that um, because weasels are out so much, constantly going to try to get food, like I said, five to six times a day, they are constantly in a risk of being prey themselves and more exposed to predators such as large birds. Um, I know it is being considered now that maybe large bird species and other predators are a reason for what seems like a decline in weasel species. Um, but either way, weasels themselves are very ferocious little predators um, and this slide kind of highlights their character. Um, here's a quote by Brandis Davis that says, Their small stature, inquisitive nature, and aggressive temperament place them among controversy. Um, and that is again by Brandon Davis at the University of Montana. And here is a picture that also kind of shows their nature. Um, this is a weasel that was taken, it was actually taken of a least weasel in England, but it still kind of highlights the character of weasels um, and their little ferocious nature. This is a weasel jumping on the back of a bird trying to kill it. Um, now granted, um, it's not unusual for weasels to jump on the back of their prey. They often will do that in order to bite the back of the neck and break the neck. Um, and they also will go lots of times go after prey that is a little bit larger than themselves Although I think in this picture it might have bitten off a little bit more than it can chew since it's now riding on the back flying away But it still proves a point that they're determined little creatures um, So what are the habitat requirements for long-tailed weasels? Lop uh, weasels prefer forests, especially more mature forests near a water source. It's often thought in literature that um, they are limited by a free-flowing water source, which is a stream that they use to navigate and travel, kind of as protection from the predators, as stated before. Um, they enjoy brushy er well, select brushy areas, thickets, and dense understory. Those also give them protection from predators, and it's also where you find a lot of your mice and things like that that will be prey to weasels. Um, they live in decaying logs, stumps, under tree roots, and small cavities. Sometimes they'll inhabit cavities either made by other animals or even their prey species. Um, and then lots of times these dens will be lined with grass, leaves, and fur of rabbits, small rodents, and other prey. Also, lots of times their dens will have little annexes or separate rooms that are connected, and those will be filled with extra prey um, because they often kill much more than they actually need. So here is a guest guesstimated <laughs> range of species of long-tailed weasel species in North Carolina. Now it's a complete guesstimation. Um, it, we it is slightly based off of records that we have and also um, habitat requirements, but we really just don't know. There haven't been any studies done on weasels in North Carolina. We do get the majority of our information through the public, either through road kills or also um, trappers as well give a lot of information. Now this. Um, map is a little bit more concrete than the last one. It shows the actual records that we have. Now all of these are museum records. There are some more with the um, Wildlife Resources Commission as well. They get a lot more as far as incidences involving weasels and that kind of thing, but these records are ones that come from the public to the museum, either from a sighting or a roadkill or something like that. Um, and you can see that there are records of weasels throughout North Carolina, Piedmont uh, Mountains, and coast. Um, although the blue spots up there are kind of questionable purely because it's from Lee, um, the publication in 1982, and that's a little bit more outdated. We do think that the population has declined since then, or at least it seems so from our records. Um, 
But that's where research comes in, is we're trying to research and learn more about weasels specifically in North Carolina and really nationwide. Um, here is an example of Brandon Davis at University of Montana. Him and Dr. Case, who actually works at NC State, developed this baited tube technique to trap weasels. Uh, Brandon Davis is now using this at the U University of Montana in the Mills lab, who also used to work at NC State. Um, and this, his study runs from August to April, and the tubes that they use mimic natural cavities that weasels would have used. Now these tubes, um, they mimic the cavities, they give it more, because the cameras are so close, they give it a little bit more of a focal point um, for the weasels to go into. And then it's testing the habitat selection and limiting factors. So like I said, that water um, or something, or like, you know, fence understory or something like that, that would limit the weasels otherwise. So that'll get, hopefully give us especially more information. Granted, it is a little bit further away in the country, but it at least give us an idea more because um, a lot of the studies that have currently been done are in Canada and like that, especially on least weasels and short-tailed weasels that are more confined to northern ranges and higher elevations. And that brings me to this North Carolina Trappers Association Research Grant. Um, now, I got this grant in October of 2018, and I am... Um, deploying the same technique that Brandon Davis used with his baited tubes but on a much much smaller scale. Essentially we're just trying to test to see whether or not these tubes are effective in trapping long tail weasels or any weasels essentially in North Carolina because you don't want to go and do a whole master's project or something like that and spend a lot of time and money and effort or a technique that's not going to work. So we want to make sure that it works and if it does we want to kind of see like a basis of information on weasels in North Carolina. Um, and that study will hopefully be completed by May of 2019. So thank you. I hope you enjoy this little cartoon of a weasel. And I hope you walk away with a little bit more information about weasels, especially in North Carolina. Thank you.